What's up guys, it's Amanda and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be painting a cigar box with Posca pens. And if you're asking yourself, Amanda, where the heck do I get a cigar box? It's not like I'm just chain smoking cigars every day. There's a few different suggestions that I have. Um, I acquired my cigar box from my dad who smokes them occasionally and knows that I like them so he'll set them aside for me. If you don't have a cool dad that sits around and smokes cigars sometimes, um, you can check out local cigar shops. That's another thing that I've done before. Sometimes they will sell them to you, uh, especially because they unbox them anyway and usually sell them individually. So that's one option. And the final option is it doesn't have to be a cigar box at all. There's plenty of cute little decorative boxes that you can get at Michael's or even secondhand at a thrift store that you can purchase and take home and then do with as you please. All of the art supplies that I do use in today's video will be in the description bar down below. They are affiliate links, so be sure to check those out. And if you choose to purchase from them, thank you. It supports my channel which is super rad. But there is kind of an extra special component to this video, and that is I am going to dedicate it to Mira Byler. And the reason I'm doing that is because she did this very awesome kind gesture this week on Twitter where she basically just shouted out my channel. And in response to that, my channel saw the biggest growth spurt it has seen in a while. And it meant so much to me, not only because it was coming from a fellow artist in the community that you all likely know and love and respect, but also just because it's coming during a time where I was kind of struggling with social media in general because I had kind of been stagnating across a few platforms. So it felt really good just to be noticed and recognized. And to be noticed and recognized by somebody as sweet and genuine as, as Mira is just so, so special. And coincidentally, some of my favorite videos that Mira makes are her Posca pen videos. And so I felt like what better way to celebrate Mira and all of you new Mira subscribers than to do a Posca pen video. So Mira, thank you from the bottom of my heart you are amazing and i just appreciate what you did so 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 much and thank you to everyone from mira's channel who decided to subscribe and follow me it means a lot that you are now part of my internet family and i'm so happy that you're here and without further ado let's just get into the video so i'm starting off here with my cigar box completely untouched except for this tiny little ding on the front cover that happened when i was flying this home uh, in my suitcase coming back from my christmas trip so i figured that this box as it stood now probably could do with some sanding before i went in and gessoed it just to kind of just get rid of any sort of finish that they put on it that would prevent the gesso and the Posca markers from adhering to the wood. I don't really have good sandpaper for this so I kind of just used what I had and you can see once I kind of like wipe everything down it didn't really make a huge difference so I don't know if this was completely necessary but I just knew that because I wasn't working with the raw unfinished wood here sanding it would probably be a good idea. It also gave me a good chance to file down any rough edges or little splintery bits that were kind of sticking out so I do think it's a step worth doing if you have the sandpaper uh, especially if you are going to gesso this just because you want the gesso to adhere. I wasn't necessarily trying to completely get rid of any text or anything because I knew it was going to pretty much be covered up and even the parts of the box that were kind of embossed or indented weren't really going to be visible in the final product. Now moving on to gesso, I am using the Pro Art Premium Gesso Canvas Primer. I got this on Amazon so I'll have it linked down below, but one of the issues I ran into with this gesso in particular is that it was kind of old so there were some kind of chunky dried up bits that fell down into the jar and did kind of make it onto the box itself. Also, it just took a lot of layers of gesso to get this as opaque as I wanted. 
Uh, you can see even though I'm using this sponge and I'm trying to saturate it as much as possible, I did end up with a lot of streaks. So one way that I started to combat this was that I would alternate the direction of my strokes every time I went in and added a new layer. This just helped to number one, build the opacity, but also kind of minimize the texture a little bit so that all of the lines weren't going in one way. I do think this helped when I got to the actual painting portion of this project because uh, I don't think the markers had a tendency to bleed quite as much into those lines as they were going in those various directions. Once the gesso fully dried, I quickly sketched out a rough design for this box. Now I had a pretty clear idea in mind for this box and it actually ties back to a poll I released on Twitter honestly probably months ago now it was shortly after christmas um and i asked you guys to vote between vintage space themed and romantic floral themed you guys voted for vintage space and there were some votes to combine the theme but honestly i'm really happy that i just went with one but you can tell just how long I've been thinking about this project because that poll was out around the end of December and here we are midway through February and I'm finally executing it. But it also kind of worked out because now I get to release this video and talk about the amazingly kind-hearted thing that Mira Byler did which was uh, shout out my channel on Twitter and if this is the first video of mine that you're watching and you heard about my channel from Mira Byler, then I think it kind of makes perfect sense. So I started out by just coloring some of the larger blocks of color. You can see I'm starting out with this gray and I kind of have this very swoopy organic shape that carries over throughout the entire box. And I just thought that this was a really nice design element that solidified uh, the entire box. So no matter what side of the box you were looking at, there was this one cohesive element that kind of kept going throughout all of the different sides. And for the gray marker, I actually felt like this was really opaque and I really only had to do like one coat. The same cannot be said for the black Posca marker. I definitely had to go over a few areas several times and it still didn't really fully cover, but I am still happy with my choice to gesso the box first because I feel like it gave the markers the best chance of blending together and it did give me some time to work with the colors on the box before they just soaked into the wood and disappeared forever. So I'm happy with my choice to gesso the box. It probably also helped prolong the life of these marker nibs because they weren't rubbing against the raw grain of the wood. But I started out with the top part of the box because that was the part I felt most confident in. Um, even though I had been planning out this box and this theme for a while, I didn't really plan out the specific colors or shapes that I was going to be doing at all. I sort of did a few rough concepts in Procreate, but I was mostly messing around with uh, the design and theme in general and not really looking for anything specific for this box or this project. And I think it was a risky move, but at the end of the day, I really love the way that this turned out. And I don't think it would have been as fun to meticulously plan every single side of it. Instead, it was sort of like a puzzle that I was solving as I went. And I had to sort of make last minute decisions about where I was going to put color so that it wouldn't look too similar or you wouldn't have two large objects the same color next to each other. So it was a good kind of mental puzzle to do this sort of spontaneously rather than plan it out. And I think there's something to be said for having certain projects that you just do for fun and not because you want it to turn out perfectly. So here you can really start to see some of those planet silhouettes take shape much more clearly and hopefully that's making this whole process more interesting to watch because it's really hard to see my sketch on the box because I just used a very light blue pencil to roughly shape out these planets. Um, and that was basically all of the prep work that I did. Everything else, I'm just winging it. Once I had all the black filled in and I was about to start coloring the planets, I really tried to limit myself to using no more than three colors on each planet. 
and for the smaller ones I really tried to limit it to only two colors. I really wanted to keep the look of this very simple and fun so I didn't want to be overcrowding any part of this box with too many colors. Another element of this whole video that was sort of <laughs> unplanned and unintentional is that each side of this box kind of plays on like a complementary color scheme completely by accident. Like I said, I didn't really plan this out, but I think just based on the array of Posca markers that I had, I ended up grabbing for complementary colors to highlight the two main parts of the side of each box. So for example, in, in the top part of the box, I have these two larger planets. And so I did one of them orange and then sort of just thought blue would look really nice next to it. So I did the other one blue. And on other parts of the box, I would have one part be purple. And then I would just kind of think to myself, huh, you know, it would look really good next to that yellow. Um, so I think it's just sort of funny that I didn't intentionally plan to do that but it turned out that that was sort of a pattern I repeated throughout this video and it kind of parallels this whole video in general about how I didn't plan to uh, be talking about Mira Byler in a Posca pen video but somehow it's very very fitting. Another huge element of this project was playing with various textures because I wanted to limit the amount of detail and color that I used in this project. I used texture to kind of make the various planets stand apart from one another. For most of this video, this just meant using very simple cell shading, but in other parts of the video, I got a little more hands on and actually used like my fingers and the nib of the pen to blend two colors together while the ink was still very wet. And I love the effect of this and I think I would actually love to do a larger scale Posca pen project where I basically combined finger painting is into part of the process. It was really fun and very liberating <laughs> and I think it was just a good way to get me out of my own head when it came to painting this whole project which was out of my element in a lot of ways. You'll also see there's some more patchy black areas. Those do dry down and look a lot less noticeable, but in this angle and this shot in particular, it looks really weird. And the little white stars do kind of help to distract from that, but I promise in the final piece, it doesn't look that weird. <laughs> all in all, I really kind of revisited this project over the course of several days where I wouldn't allow myself to get too caught up into any one part of it. I would just sort of sit down, color aside, and then walk away and come back a day or two later to paint a new side. Um, and I don't really think I thought very much about how the different sides would look next to each other, um, but at the end of the day it all kind of worked out and that definitely goes back to having a limited color palette that feels cohesive and with Posca markers, it really takes a lot of the hard work out of it because I feel like all the colors are designed to look good together and Posca markers in general just kind of have this like easy effortless look to them, <laughs> which I feel like just speaks to them as a, as a brand and as a company. Like it's kind of their whole motto is like, you can use these on anything and it just kind of works. And that definitely felt like the case here. <laughs> Maybe it was just me, but every time I use Posca markers, I just feel like the word that comes to mind is fun. It's fun, it's easy, you don't overthink it, and even if you do make mistakes, it still looks kind of cool. My last spur of the moment decision for this final project was to write a little message on the inside of the box, and the first thing that came to mind was the phrase, you are out of this world. Obviously it fits with the space theme, but it also just kind of captures how I feel about the art community in general and in this video especially about Mira, who did just this very kind-hearted thing and, you know, shouted out my channel on Twitter, which she totally didn't have to do, but it meant a lot that she did and I think 
if you don't know Mira, the one thing that I can say about her is that she is an out of this world creator and she's just so kind and sweet and special. And so you should definitely go check her out. And if you are from Mira's channel, thank you for subscribing and choosing to watch my videos. It's been really awesome to just read your guys' comments. You're so sweet and just so engaging, which is definitely, I think, um, a big reflection on the community that Mira has built here on YouTube and how that kind of extends beyond her in a lot of ways. And that's it. Now we have this super cute, adorable little cigar box that is painted in little planets. I love this. I'm definitely going to spray it with a protective coating. And I think the only person who I would want to have this box is Mira. So I'm gonna find a way to send this to you and I'm gonna figure it out. And if I figure it out without having to DM you, then this is gonna be a surprise. But if I have to DM you to figure that out, then it's gonna kind of spoil the surprise and it also might not get there before this video is out. But either way, surprise, <laughs> this box is going to be sent to you and delivered to you um, because really there is nobody who deserves it more than you and I hope you like it. I had a ton of fun making it for you. And yeah, that is it for this video. I definitely wanna paint more things with Posca markers and they're just honestly a super fun art supply that I feel like I really need right now in my life because I need something that's just like fun and who cares if I mess up, I still really like the results. And yeah, I don't know. I just wanna do more stuff like this. So if you guys like it, let me know what you want me to paint next. And without further ado, I will let you guys go and I will see you on the internet. I feel like I'm having to like really sit up. I don't know what, I don't know why I just filmed the whole video from down here.